So hello everybody, uh, we come to the last topic of uh, atomic and molecular structure that is unit 1A of uh, engineering chemistry. Now in today's topic, uh, we will be dealing with metallic bonding and uh, we very well know that metallic bonding is a attractive force that binds uh, uh, the many atoms of a metal or uh, many atoms of different metal, metals within the sphere of a metallic crystal and such type of attractive force is nothing but a metallic bond. Now what are the characteristics of metals? We know that all metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. They are hard and they have high melting point and high boiling point. They have got high density. They have a metallic luster that means there is a shine on the surface of all metals. They have, are hard and they have high elasticity. They have the tendency to crystallize and they also have uh, the tendency to form alloys with other metals. And last point is that they can be drawn into wires or they can be hammered into sheets. Now the property of uh, uh, the metals being drawn into wires is known as ductility and the property of metals being hammered into sheets is known as malleability. Now let us come to the molecular orbital theory. We have already dealt with its postulates and we have already dealt with its application to uh, homonuclear diatomic molecules as well as to heteronuclear diatomic molecules. Now, in, in this uh, metallic bonding uh, topic, we are going to extend the postulates of molecular orbital theory to metals. And the typical example of a metal that we are considering is the sodium metal. Now, we know that sodium has a, a electronic configuration of or that the total atomic number is 11 out of which the 10 electrons are housed in the innermost uh, orbitals. Whereas, one single electron is placed in the 3s atomic orbital and that is the value or vital. So while considering the sodium uh, metal uh, and uh, uh, and the bonding in sodium metals, uh, we are going to consider the valence electrons. So this is an energy level diagram of a sodium uh, molecule. That means many atoms of sodium, how they are getting uh, added to form a molecule. That means here you can see that a single sodium atom has a only one electron in the 3s atomic orbital. Now we consider a Na2 molecule in which two atoms of sodium are combining. So that means the two 3s atomic orbitals of sodium uh, they will combine or overlap to give rise to two molecular orbitals so that was the uh, first postulate of the uh, molecular orbital theory that we have learned earlier is that the atomic orbitals of the same symmetry and uh, same energy they will only overlap and they will also overlap to give rise to two molecular orbitals one is the bonding molecular orbital another is the anti-bonding molecular orbital also the bonding molecular orbital has lower energy level as compared to an antibonding molecular orbital. So in the case of two atoms of sodium combining to form a molecule, we also see the same phenomenon here. That means the this is the bonding molecular orbital and this is the antibonding molecular orbital. So here the bonding molecular orbital, you can see that it has got lower energy level and uh, as compared to the antibonding molecular orbital. Now coming to the filling of the two electrons, of the two sodium atoms, the two electrons will be filled in the bonding molecular orbital as uh, per the Aubus principle. Now let us come to three atoms of sodium combining to give rise to a Na3 molecule. Now let me tell one thing. Uh, uh, at this point is that when we have dealt with the postulates of molecular orbital theory, we have only considered the diatomic molecules. But now we are considering triatomic, tetraatomic or pentaatomic or many more atom atomic molecules when they at atoms when they join to form a molecule. So now in the case of Na3, we know that there are three atoms of sodium that will combine to give rise to Na3 and the three sodium atoms will have three S atomic orbitals. So that means the three S atomic orbitals will overlap to give rise to three molecular orbitals. So please remember again I repeat so the three uh, 3s atomic orbitals they will overlap to give rise to three molecular orbitals so that means one is the bonding molecular orbital another is the antibonding molecular orbital you can see the antibonding molecular orbital is at the higher energy level and the bonding molecular orbital is at the lower energy level now the third 
molecular orbital is the non bonding molecular orbital now we let, let us come to the uh, the energy level diagram or the energy level of the non bonding molecular orbital now this non bonding molecular orbital is exactly middle of the two uh, molecular orbitals that is the bonding and the anti bonding molecular orbital now this energy of the non bonding molecular orbital is exactly intermediate between the bonding and the anti bonding molecular orbital now let us come to the filling of the electrons so we know that the three sodium atoms uh, the three there are three valence electrons that will uh, um, fill the molecular orbitals so that means the two electrons uh, are filling the uh, lower most bonding uh, that is the bonding molecular orbital and the single electron is going to the non bonding molecular orbital so you can see that till now the anti bonding molecular orbitals are empty now let us come to the uh, phenomenon when four sodium atoms are combining to give rise to a na4 molecule so four sodium atoms means that four uh, 3s atomic orbitals will overlap now here uh, let me again tell you the four uh, atomic orbitals will overlap to give rise to four molecular orbitals so that means you can see here there are four molecular orbitals here and these two are the bonding molecular orbitals and these two are the anti bonding molecular orbitals so in the case of even number of uh, atoms combining to form a molecule then we, uh, we we must understand that the total number of bonding molecular orbitals will be equal to the total number of anti bonding molecular orbitals so here in the case of even number of atoms joining there will be no non bonding molecular orbital so now let us come to the filling of the uh, four electrons of the four sodium atoms the the four valence electrons will occupy the lower uh, uh, molecular orbitals that means all the four molecular uh, electrons will be filled by filled into the four uh, uh, into the two bonding molecular orbital so that means two electrons are filled in the uh, one of the bonding molecular orbital and the other two are getting filled in the second bonding molecular orbital so here you can see that the uh, the two anti bonding molecular orbitals are vacant so now let us come to five atomic uh, five atoms of sodium combining to give rise to a na5 molecule now uh, the five uh, 3s atomic orbitals they will overlap to give rise to five molecular orbitals so here this since this is a odd number of uh, atoms the non bonding will come into picture that means the non bonding one of the molecular orbitals will be a non bonding molecular orbital so that means the out of the five uh, molecular orbitals two will be bonding two will be anti bonding and the fifth one will be a non bonding molecular orbital so all these are having a distinct energy level but you can see that as the number of atoms are increasing the number of molecular orbitals are also increasing proportionality and we can see that the difference between any two uh, uh, energy uh, any two molecular orbitals are very less that means it is decreasing um, uh, the difference in the uh, energy level between any two consecutive molecular orbitals is decreasing as the number of atoms are increasing so now same thing here uh, in the case of six atoms of sodium combining to give rise to a na6 molecule here since it is a even number of atoms so that means there will be no non bonding molecular orbitals formed so that means the six uh, 3s atomic orbitals will overlap to give rise to six molecular orbitals three are bonding molecular orbitals and three are anti bonding molecular orbitals and here you can see that there is no non bonding molecular orbital and the six uh, valence electrons uh, they will be placed only in the bonding molecular orbital so you can see here that all the three uh, bonding molecular orbitals they are filled by two electrons each whereas the anti bonding molecular orbitals they are vacant so uh, uh, summarily i can say that uh, as the number of atoms of sodium are uh, increasing uh, within the molecule of uh, sodium that means uh, as the metallic within the metallic uh, lattice the number of atoms are increasing so with the number of atoms increasing the number of molecular orbitals are increasing and 
proportionality we can say that the energy gap between two consecutive molecular orbital is also simultaneously decreasing so that means we can say that when infinite number of sodium atoms are combining to form a so sodium metal lattice like structure we can see that the uh, uh, in uh, infinite number of sodium atoms combining uh, atomic orbitals combining to give rise to infinite number of bonding uh, molecular orbitals and infinite number of antibonding molecular orbitals and now this red zone is nothing but uh, it is containing infinite number of uh, bonding molecular orbitals as well as the non-bonding molecular orbitals and the energy gap between any two consecutive uh, bonding molecular orbitals is so less that we can visualize this entire uh, band, entire uh, region as one band so that means this uh, the the concept of band is arising because of this phenomenon that means uh, what is the phenomenon that as the number of atoms uh, combining uh, uh, is increasing that means the number of bonding molecular orbitals is also correspondingly increasing to the to the extent that the energy gap between any two corresponding bonding molecular orbital is so negligible that we can consider this entire region as one band so we can say that this entire band consisting of infinite number of bonding molecular orbitals is nothing but the valence band and you can see that all the valence electrons uh, in the case of sodium they are occupying only the uh, bonding molecular orbital and to, to some extent the non-bonding molecular orbital and this constituting the bands that means the valence band so the valence band uh, comprises of the valence electrons so let us come to the antibonding molecular orbitals that means when infinite number of sodium atoms are combining within the metal lattice like structure we can say that there will be infinite number of antibonding molecular orbitals and the energy gap between any two consecutive antibonding molecular orbital is so less that we can consider or visualize this as one one particular band and this particular band is nothing but the conduction band and you can see that uh, uh, the conduction band is having no electrons at all so this is uh, giving rise to the band theory so that means the molecular orbital theory when it is extended to metals like sodium potassium magnesium calcium all these are metals so that means the they will be uh, correspondingly uh, known as the band theory so let us come to the uh, band theory the postulates each atomic orbital of two metal atoms interact giving rise to two molecular orbitals now the atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbital they need to have the same energy and same symmetry each molecular orbital is associated with a distinct energy level and each has the capacity to accommodate maximum of two electrons now the bonding molecular orbitals are resulting from constructive interference whereas the antibonding molecular orbitals are resulting from the destructive interference now the bonding orbitals are always at a lower energy level than the antibonding molecular orbital now the number of uh, atomic orbitals that are combining they will always give rise to the same number of molecular orbitals so for every bonding molecular orbital formed one one antibonding molecular orbital is also formed now for odd number of bonding atoms a non bonding molecular orbital is formed now the molecular orbitals formed belong to the entire set of atoms now as the number of atoms increase in a metallic crystal more will be the number of atomic orbitals which may overlap to give more molecular orbitals each and having a distinct energy level now the separation of energy between any two adjacent molecular orbital energy levels would go on decreasing with increase in the number of overlapping atomic orbitals. Now hence the overlapping atomic orbitals are very large there will be virtually no energy difference between one molecular orbital and the next. So at this point the molecular orbital has merged into a band of continuous energy and this is the origin of the term band theory. So this is all about your uh, band theory. So uh, I hope you have understood this concept. Now uh, I, I thank you for listening to me.